Welcome to Manflow Yoga. It's yoga for guys. Hey guys, it's Dean with Manflow Yoga. Today I'm going to try something a little differently. Instead of talking while I'm doing the session, I'm going to talk over the session. So we'll see how that works. It's going to take about twice the time for me. That's why I'm not doing it normally. But if the feedback is positive, I'll try and do it in the future. So start down with your shoulders over your hands, your knees over your hip, your knees under your hips. Reach out with your left hand and reach back with your right foot, extending as far as possible. Like your right hand's going to go through the wall and your left foot is going to touch the back wall. And then reset yourself and switch sides. So reach out with your right hand and reach back with your left foot now. Trying to touch the back wall with your left foot and trying to reach the front wall with your right hand. Stretching yourself out, getting ready for your practice today. And you're going to do some cat cows here. So as you inhale, you bring your head up and you round your spine. And then as you exhale, you do angry cat and you're trying to round your back as much as possible, stretching it out. You can do this at your own pace. Um, just inhale, exhale, inhaling cow and exhaling cat. Knees and arms stay in the same position. This is great for preparing you, for preparing your spine. It's a good warm-up exercise. Do a couple more of these. And then reset yourself into tabletop and push back into down dog. Start walking your dog out. So alternating, pushing your right foot and your, your right heel back. I'm sorry, your right heel and your left heel back into the ground. Framing your head with your bicep, with your biceps. Trying to bring your hip up as high as possible. Having a long spine here. Maybe engage your quadriceps to help get some lift. But this is your first down dog of the day, so you're not going to be as flexible as you will be at the end of the practice. So just get ready for today. And get ready to come forward, bend your knees, and twist your heels and walk forward. You're going to walk into a rag doll. So you're going to spread your feet about a foot apart. You're going to wrap your left hand around your right elbow and your right hand around your left elbow. You're going to bend your knees so that your chest can touch the tops of your, your thighs. So you feel that connection. You feel that contact. And then lower your body down. Use your head as a weight to drop down as much as possible here. This is a good opening for your hamstrings. If you want more intensity, you can straighten your straighten your legs more. Chest touching your thighs, head as a weight, lowering down. And now let's just come back into a front leaning rest position. Lower your knees, lower your chest to the ground and come into cobra with your legs on the with your legs on the ground. Quad steps flex so that your knees are off the ground. And then come back into a down dog. Reach your right leg up and then bring it to your right elbow, squeezing your squeezing your abs as you do so. And then come up again, inhaling. And then exhaling, come to your left elbow. Inhaling, bring it back up. And then bring it forward to meet knee to nose, still your right knee. And then inhale one more time, bring it all the way up, three-legged dog. Now we're going to come into some push-ups. So we're going to do five slow push-ups on your count. Try and keep your elbows in tight. Keep a good form. Keep your core engaged. Keep a straight body. And we're going to do the same thing again left side. So left knee, left leg comes up. Left knee to left elbow. And now back and left knee to right elbow. And then forward, left knee to head. And then prepare for push-ups. So five slow push-ups here, in control, pushing heels back, engaging quadriceps, engaging core.
and then come back into down dog. Reach your right leg up, and then right knee comes to right elbow. Up again, right knee comes to left elbow. Up again, right knee comes to forehead. And then lower down into a front leaning rest position, and five more push ups. In control. And then come back into a three legged dog. Left leg comes up this time. Left knee to elbow. Left knee to left elbow. Inhale. Left knee to right elbow. Inhale. Knee to nose. If you can, try and get your toe off the ground. And then five more push ups. Slow push ups. In control. And back into down dog. We're going to do one more time. So right leg comes up. Right knee to right elbow. Inhale back up. Left knee to left elbow. Inhale back up. Knee comes to nose. Inhale. And then come to a front leaning rest position. And prepare for another set of push-ups. So five more push-ups. Slow. Four, one more, five, and push back into down dog. Now left leg comes up as high as possible, and left knee comes to left elbow, comes back again, left knee to right elbow, one more time back up, knee to nose, squeezing knee to nose, back up, inhaling, and front leaning rest position, five more push ups. Long spine, crown of head reaching forward, heels pushing back, quadriceps engaged. Push back into down dog. And that's enough push-ups. So now we're going to come into a forward. So bend your knees, jump forward, come into a half lift. Long spine, neck in line with spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come into Tadasana. With your hands at your sides, palms outstretched toward the front wall. Getting ready for today's practice. Thinking about what you want to do. Thinking about what you want to accomplish. And then reach up into full Tadasana and bring your hands to prayer, exhaling. And again, just continue to meditate on what you're going to do today. Reach up now. Full mountain pose and exhale forward fold. Knee comes to head. Hands come to floor. Inhale, half lift. Nice long spine. Bend your legs if you need to. And jump back and prepare to flow. Chaturanga is lowering down. Inhaling to up dog. Get a nice long stretch here. Opening your chest to the sky. And then exhaling to down dog. Right leg comes up. You're going to bring it forward to your hands. Use your core strength to bring it through. You don't want to just kick it up there. Now come into warrior one. With a 45 degree angle on your back foot. Make sure that your body's aligned so that your hips are facing forward. Make sure that your back foot has your entire foot touching the ground. You're going to need to push hard so that the outside of your left foot is touching the ground. And then bend to a 90 degree angle if you can and your front foot. If you can't, that's fine. I'm not doing it here. And then make sure your core is engaged. Reach up. Biceps frame your ears. And then try and get a little deeper in the pose as you exhale. As you inhale, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, deeper into the pose. Getting a deeper stretch in your front leg, but also maintaining contact with the ground in your back foot. Now you're going to come to a flow. Bring your right leg up if you can, and then lower down. Inhale into up dog, and then push back into a down dog, exhaling. So opposite side now. Just taking a break, breathing, and opposite side comes up. So left leg comes up, bring it to meet your hands, using your core strength to bring it there. Right leg turns 45 degree angle. Make sure that your back foot is entirely rooted in the ground. You've got a nice um, bend in your front leg, and your foot is rooted, knees pointed straight over your feet. Core's engaged, reaching up, 
biceps frame ears and as you inhale lengthen spine and as you exhale bend deeper into pose bend a little deeper make sure that you're pressing your back foot down into the ground and then spin your right foot and bring your left foot up and back lower down keeping your left leg up if you can come into an up dog inhaling and then exhaling push back into a down dog bend your knees look forward bring your heels off the ground and jump forward bring your feet to your hands inhale to a half lift exhale forward fold inhale to a full tadasana with your hands above your head reaching up as high as possible trying to be as tall as possible and exhaling forward fold let your head drop inhale forward lift I'm sorry inhale half lift and forward fold I right, push back into a front lean rest position and then lower down chaturangas inhaling to up dog and exhaling into down dog right leg comes up right leg is framed by right foot is framed by hands and you're coming up into warrior one pushing your back foot against the ground and we're coming to a slight back bend here so open your arms up a little bit and then just lean back so opening up your back and then we're going to come into we're going to help prepare for humble warrior so just drape your body to the inside of your right knee and then come back up into warrior one interlace your fingers at your back and try and open your chest up as much as possible to the sky and then you're going to keep your arms interlaced and lean forward bringing your head next to your right knee and trying to lower down as much as possible it's going to feel pretty strenuous in your right leg this is a good back opener it's called humble warrior your back foot's still in warrior one make sure that you're pushing back in your back foot and that your front leg remains the same and now you're going to inhale back into warrior one and then you're going to root your hands down spin your back foot come into a front leaning rest position with your right leg up inhale into an up dog really trying to open your chest here making sure you're using your lower body muscles and not just your chest and your hands and then exhaling push back into a down dog now your left leg is going to come up your left leg your left foot is framed by your hands it's been into a 45 degree angle with your back foot so your right foot make sure that your right foot is completely into the ground you can readjust if necessary the important thing is to have good form it doesn't matter how deep you go if you're not doing it correctly it doesn't mean anything so make sure you have a good warrior good warrior one set up and then lean your body forward bringing your body to the inside of your left knee and then inhale interlace your fingers behind your back open your heart as much as possible to the sky and then exhaling bring your body to the inside of your left knee humble warrior keep your fingers interlaced trying to squeeze your shoulders together if you can't interlace your fingers you can always use a towel or a rope to help simulate that connection between your hands to help open your shoulders and then inhale come back into a warrior one make sure you have good warrior one form and then root your I'm sorry root your back foot bring your hands to frame your foot left foot comes left foot stays up lower down in chaturangas inhale into up dog and then push back into a down dog trying to form an L with your body in down dog now inhale your right sorry inhale your right leg up frame it to frame to be framed by your hands 
and come into warrior two. So your back foot's at 90 degrees. Your feet are in a line. Your heel pointing toward your heel and your back foot. And then bring your hands up. Make sure your core is engaged. Make sure that your knee is pointed over your middle toe. And then constantly be striving to turn your knee toward the right wall. So your right knee is constantly opening. Try and force that. Never get complacent in a pose. Always try and strive to be better. Or if it hurts, if it hurts, don't go any farther. But if it doesn't hurt, if you think you can do more, if you want to do more, you always have that option to go deeper. And then inhale into Reverse Warrior. And then exhale into side Extended Side Angle. You can lightly rest your forearm on your knee, or you can press your elbow into your knee and open up your body a little bit more. Come back into a warrior two, and then windmill your hands, and then bring your right leg back, three-legged dog, lower down, chaturangas, inhale to up dog, and then exhale to down dog. Now your left foot is going to come up, and you're going to bring your left foot to be framed by your hands, using your core strength to do so. Your back foot spins 90 degrees, trying to open up your hips here, pulling your hips open, making sure that your knee is pointed over your middle toe, that you're balanced here, that you're not leaning too far forward, too far back, just right in the middle. Hands are, hands are up. Dipped into your shoulders, shoulder length, looking over your middle finger intently, trying to constantly open your hips, pulling, actively pulling, using your muscles and your legs, your left knee closer to the side wall. And then inhale and come into a reverse warrior, exalt your warrior, try and bend your front leg a little more, and, that's, and then at that same time, Reach your left arm up and back. And now come into extended side angle. You can lightly rest your arm, your forearm on your knee, or you can push your elbow into your knee to help open up a little bit more. And then pretend like there's a line of energy coming from your back foot to your fingers. As long as possible. Come back into a warrior two. Get good warrior two form. And then windmill your hands. Come to a front leaning rest position. Lower down, chaturangas. Inhale, up dog. Get a nice long up dog here. Inhaling, trying to get your chest open. And then exhale into a down dog. Push your heels into the ground here. Make sure you have a good down dog. You should be very loose by now. We're going to do a slow chaturangas here, lowering down to the ground, and then pushing back up, lowering down, pushing back up, five, four, three, two, one, back up. One, two, three, four, five. Down, three, four, five. Up, three, four, five. Down, three, four, five. Up, three, four, five. And push back into a down dog. There's some upper body strength to work on there. You're going to inhale your right leg. Bring your right leg to be framed by your left, by, sorry, by your hands. And come into a crescent warrior. Make sure that you've got a 90 degree bend in your front foot. That you're pushing back on your heel and your right, and your right foot. And sorry, on your left. Core's engaged. Biceps frame your ears. Now we're going to switch, so come into a three-legged dog, 
with your right leg, lower that foot down, bring your left leg up, and then bring your left foot to frame, be framed by your hands, and come into Crescent Warrior. 90 degree bend in your front foot, pushing back in your heel, in your right foot, making sure your right foot's engaged, your right leg is engaged, all those muscles, your heads, your hands, or sorry, your biceps frame your head. And then bring your right leg back in three-legged dog. Switch legs, right leg comes up, and then right leg comes forward, and come into Crescent Warrior again. Make sure your core is engaged. Nice bend in your leg, in your um, front leg. Your back leg, your left leg is engaged and strong. Making sure your core is engaged. Turning your pelvis slightly upward. And then reach your hands up, biceps frame your ears. We're going to turn our hands now. So just turn your hands inward so that your pinkies are closer to your head. And then come to airplane arms. And then come back to Crescent Warrior with your biceps framing your head, with your pinkies turned inward, and then lower down. And then we're going to switch legs. So left leg comes up now. Bring your left leg to be framed, left foot to be framed by hands. Right leg, right hip comes forward, left hip goes back. Pressing back in your heel, in your right foot. And then inhaling up, turning your pinkies in. Reaching up, this is a good way to open your shoulders, to open your back. And then reach back, airplane arms, dip your body slightly forward. And then bring your hands back with your biceps framing your ears and your pinkies turned inward. And then come up into a three-legged dog in your right leg. And come into a front-leaning rest position, lowering down chaturangas. Inhaling into up dog. Exhaling into down dog. Come to the front, bending your knees, looking forward, jumping, bringing your feet to hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale all the way up, Tadasana. And then bring your hands to prayer. We're going to go into Warrior 3. So bring your hands up above you with your fingers interlaced and your index finger pointed up. And then you're going to walk. So bring your weight onto your right foot and start to bend forward into Warrior 3, keeping your right leg straight engaged. Only holding this for 10 seconds. Your toes are pointed to the back wall. Your body is a T. Pointing forward in your hands, trying to make your body as long as possible, really feeling it in your back. And then come back up, in control. Bring your hands to side, and uh, Tadasana, with your palms extended to the front wall, and get ready to go on your left foot now. So bring your hands up, interlace your fingers, index finger is extended, and then transfer the weight into your front, into your left foot. Bring your right leg up and back. Hips in line, right leg, right foot pointed back, toes pointed directly toward the back wall, fingers extended forward, trying to lengthen your body as much as possible, and then come back. Come back to Tadasana, palms extended, palms open toward the front wall, and just breathe. Appreciate what you've done, and we're going to do another set now. So get ready, bring your hands together above your head, interlace your fingers, index finger is pointed out. Take a step forward on your right foot, slowly transfer the weight to your right foot, and then bring your left foot, left leg up, making that capital T again, reaching your right, reaching your hands forward as much as possible with your fingers extended, pointing your back left foot into the wall as much as possible with toes pointed towards the wall, and then come back in control. Come to Tadasana again. We're going to get ready for opposite side now. Bring your hands above your head. 
interlace your fingers. Index finger is pointed. Index fingers are pointed up. Come to your front leg on your left foot, and then extend your body as much as possible. Make sure you have a straight leg here. Or try to have a straight leg here, pointing your toes back, pointing your fingers toward the wall, as long a body as possible, and then come back and bring your hands to prayer. You can focus your gaze on your hands, just appreciating what you've done. Stay in control here. Don't fidget. Don't shake things out. Just be aware of your body. Figure out what needs to heal. Figure out where you need to work on. And just meditate on that. Now we're going to go into dancer pose. So right leg. You're going to prepare for this by swinging your hands up alternatively. And squeezing your hands out a little bit. Inhale your left hand up. And then grab the inside of your right foot with your right hand. And then push your right leg back, your right foot back. And as you push your right foot back, your left hand comes forward, reaching toward the front wall. And all the strength in this pose comes from you pressing in to your right hand with your right foot. They say in Bikram that the harder the put, the harder you push, the harder it is to fall. I don't know about that, but try it. Maybe it'll work for you. And then come back, standing. You're gonna switch legs now. Switch hands. So right leg inhales, comes to sky. Bring your left foot. I'm sorry. Bring your left hand down and grab your inside of your left ankle, and then push back with your left foot. Your left arm's fully extended, and the strength again comes from your left foot pressing into your hand. Reach forward with your right hand, and if you were in a mirror, you would see, if you were looking in a mirror while you're doing this, you're going to see your foot coming out of your head, and then come back in control to stand in position, Tadasana. Get ready for one more set. So left hand comes up. You're going to grab your inside of your right ankle with your right hand and push back. Again, the strength all comes from your right leg here, pressing into your hand. Reaching forward with your left hand. Gaze focused in one specific spot. That'll help your balance a little longer. If you fall out of it, that's fine. Just get back into it. But get back into it slowly. The slower you go into a pose, the more in control you are. If you go into it quickly, you're going to lose it. And then come out of it. Again, slowly and in control if you can. Now you're going to bring your right hand up. And you're going to put your left hand behind you. And grab the inside of your left ankle. And then you're going to push your left foot back. And as your left foot pushes back, you reach forward with your right hand. And all the strength is coming from your left foot, your left leg. Your right hand, I'm sorry, your left hand is completely controlled by the strength of your left leg. It does nothing here. All it does is hold on for dear life. And then come back to standing pose, Tadasana. Take a couple deep breaths, recover. And then inhale to full Tadasana, hands extended. Exhale to a forward fold. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale forward fold. And then Come into a ragdoll pose. Wrap your right arm around, wrap your right hand on your left elbow and your left hand on your right elbow. And let your head be a weight that just pulls you down.
bend your knees as much as you need to here. If you're looking for a deeper stretch in your hamstring, if that serves you right now, then straighten your legs a little bit. Try and keep your chest into your thighs though, or at least touching some part of your thigh. Half lift, forward fold, inhale, come to full Tadasana with hands above your head, and then exhale, bringing your hands to prayer. Inhale, full Tadasana, and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come to a half lift, and then exhale, come into a front leaning rest position. Lowering down chaturangas, inhaling to an up dog, and then exhaling into a down dog. And then you're going to come forward, bringing your, bring, come, in, come into a seated position. And we're going to come into an inversion here. So interlace your fingers to help pull your shoulders together. And then put your hands on your lower back to help push your body up. Your body should be in a line here. It should be perpendicular with the ground. If your feet are too far back over your head, you're not doing the pose correctly. The weight here is in your shoulders, not in your neck. You should be pointing your toes upward to the ceiling. And then come out of the pose. And we're gonna some other options for inversion is the headstand. So you're gonna interlace your fingers. Your fingers come to the back of your head. Your hands are about a foot apart. Your horns are about a foot apart. And then using your core strength, you're gonna bring your body up. And set up for a handstand. If you fall out, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't freak out and let your feet hit the ground. Um, it's best to kind of roll into it if you start to fall. So to transfer uh, the weight slowly from your neck to your back to your butt as you fall. If you fall and then just lash out with your feet that'll hurt a lot so here I'm just messing around just working out some different balance alternating my feet bringing one down keeping one up so if you want to do inversion like that you can do that and then your last option is to do a headstand or a handstand you can do this against the wall if you don't have the balance or if you have the strength and the balance, and you want to try a handstand with unass unassisted, go for it. If you want to work on your upper body strength, your shoulder strength, you might want to go into a handstand. So here you've seen all three options. If you want to pause and work on an inversion for two minutes, go for it. I'm going to go on into a child's pose now. And child's pose is a great back relief. So you're going to reach your hands out as far as you can. And then you're going to press your hands into the ground so that your hips go further back to your feet. You're going to feel it in your lumbar and your lower spine. I say lumbar? Lumbar, sorry. In your lumbar and your lower spine. Again, pressing your hands into the ground so that your hips go further toward your feet, toward your heels. Your toes are touching and your feet are mat width distance here. Your forehead is in the ground. I know you can't tell from the video, or can you? Again, keeping a few deep breaths here. Really finding the relief of this pose. Now we're going to come into Dolphin. So your forearms are pointed toward the wall. You can't tell here, but they're about a foot apart. 
your forearms are your fingers are pointed toward the wall palms flat on the ground and we're just going to do a plank here 30 breaths 30 slow to medium breaths and just hold it so engaging your quadriceps trying to bring your crown of your head forward as much as possible engaging your core pushing your heels toward the back wall your body should be completely straight right now if you're not feeling tension in your in your lower and your abs if you're not feeling tension more so than you would if you're doing a normal plank you're not doing it correctly really try and extend your body as much as possible say hi to the guy in the window <laughs> Reaching your crown of your head forward as much as possible, pushing your heels back as far as possible, getting some length in your body. Forearms remain strong, hands pointed forward. Keep it going. About 10 more breaths. Just stay in control. Just keep breathing. As long as you're breathing, you can do this. This is especially good for you after you just did this whole workout. You've been utilizing your core the whole time. This is really going to burn your core out. This is really going to help get your core stronger. Yoga is all core. Bruce Lee, he was a huge fan of core. He used to say that all the power of his body count comes from his core. So lower your body now. Come out of the plank. Spin your body around. Lay down on your back. And we're going to do some back openers. So we're just going to go straight into these. So your arms come to rest at the sides of your body, palms facing the ground. And then reach your hips up, engage your, engage your glutes, engage your lower body. Make sure your knees are closer together. You don't want to have your knees spreading apart as you go higher. You want to keep them about a foot apart. Keep your shoulders together here. Just squeeze your shoulders together, interlace your fingers under your hands, and pull them tight. Pull them close together. The weight of this should not be in your neck. It should be in your shoulders. So make sure that your shoulders are engaged here. Reach up a little higher, and then come out. Lowering down, letting every vertebrae hit the ground individually. And then bring your knees into chest. And then come into a lying down butterfly Supta Baddha Konasana I would not know how to spell that without looking it up basically a butterfly lying down now we're going to come to second set of wheel slash bridge I'm going into bridge now if you want to go into wheel go back into that so this is wheel pose Keep your neck in line with your back. Don't look at your hands. Don't look at the ground with your head. Just keep it in line. Trying to reach your body as high as possible. Bring your hips as high as you can. Keep your knees closer together, about a foot apart. You can come on your toes here for increased resistance. You can also bring your feet closer to your hands or your heads or your hands closer to your feet. Just make sure you're breathing here. And then exhale, lowering down, letting every body, letting every vertebrae hit the ground individually lowering down slowly and in control and then again open your open your legs in the Sukta Baddha Konasana and letting gravity do the work opening your hips for a nice butterfly stretch we're gonna come into a couple final poses before we do that, do some rolls back and forth, massage your lower back, not rolling onto your neck, not using too much momentum, trying to use your core to do this. So now we're going to come to turtle. Now ideally you would put your, you would use your towel, put it over your feet and then grab your heels with your towel. I'm imagining that some of you don't have towels, so I'm doing this without that. You're going to grab your heels with your feet. Your head comes into the mat. Don't turn while you're in this position. Keep your head facing forward. And you're going to arch your back as much as possible. This will help open your back, provide some back relief. Come out of that. Reach your hands up. Press 
your hands together so that palms are completely together, that fingers are touch insides of fingers are touching insides of fingers. And then reach your hands forward as much as possible. And try and keep the weight in your back, in your legs. So you're pressing slightly into the ground with the side of your hand. And then you're trying to reach back with your hips, trying to provide some lower back relief. Come out of that the same way you came in. And when you're ready, push back into a down dog. Bring your right leg up, and we're going to go into some lizard pose. So right leg comes to outside of your hands. And then you're going to slowly lower your body down as much, your upper body down as much as possible. This is really going to open your hips. Now the ideal position for this is getting your forearms to touch the ground. If you can't do this, don't worry about it. Just make sure that your knee stays in line, that your knee doesn't start to open up to the side, that your foot stays planted on the ground. And you're reaching forward. Just trying to get your lower body closer to the ground. You can ease into this. So as you inhale, maintain position. And as you exhale, go lower. To come out of this, root your back foot. Bring your right leg back up. Three-legged dog. Lower down. Now bring your left leg up. And then bring your left foot to the outsides of your hands. And same thing as last time, lizard pose, this time trying to open up your other hip. Really feel this in your right hip flexor. Trying to lower your upper body to the ground as much as possible. Trying to put your forearms into the ground. Remember, as you inhale, just keep your position. As you exhale, let gravity push you a little bit lower down. Your knee shouldn't be pointed out, it should remain in the same position. If your knee starts to move to the left and your foot comes off the ground, come up a little, bring your upper body up a little bit because you're starting to lose the integrity of the posture. Now inhale to three-legged dog. And then we're just going to come to a child's pose. So knees are mat width distance, hands reach forward and then press your hands into the ground trying to bring your hips as close to your heels as possible providing some really good relief for your lower back this is the last pose of the day so just embrace this did a lot of stuff with back today did some intense poses some warrior three did some dancer's pose, did wheel, inversions, so now you're just trying to relax, ease the pain in your lower back, ease, not the pain, but ease the, the tension in your lower back. And we're going to come to a seated position, so cross your legs. Try and have a straight back straight as possible chest open head looking forward your palms are going to be open ex open to the ceiling and you're just going to think about what you were able to do today and appreciate it don't meditate on what you were not able to do again so much of your life so much of life in general is measuring our shortcomings but for now just let it be let yoga be an escape appreciation bring your head to third eye hands to third eye and bow namaste so thank you guys for watching i hope you liked it i hope that this little experiment with this handy recorder in my hand um went well that you were able to follow Feedback is greatly appreciated. I have a Twitter account that you can follow me on, at Manflow Yoga. Uh, Facebook.com is Facebook.com backslash Manflow Yoga. 
and the WordPress is manfulyoga.wordpress.com. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Namaste.